learning about the bony pelvis. The word pelvis is a Latin word that means the basin. The pelvis is not one single bone. It is made up of different bones and these bones are posteriorly we had the sacrum and coccyx and anterior laterally we have the two hip bones or the coccyx bones. The sacrum basically these are five vertebrae and they fuse together. I'll not be going in details of sacrum but I'll be talking about few salient features about the sacrum. This part of the sacrum we call it promontory. These are the alas and these are the foramina. What foramina are these? These are the anterior sacral foramina. Now we are looking at this triangular bone which is called coccyx and this coccyx is primarily made up of four rudimentary vertebrae and they are fused together to make this and this coccyx articulates with the lower end of my sacrum. Now let's look at this bone which we have on both the lateral side and anteriorly and these are my hip bone or the coxal bone. This hip bone or a coxal bone primarily these are three bones who are together. The front part is primarily made up of my pubic bone and then you are looking at the ischial part and this is the ilium. If you look at the ilium this is the iliac crest and this is my anterior superior iliac spine and there you are looking at anterior inferior iliac spine. Going downward this is the pubic tubercle. This is the pubis bone. You are looking at its superior ramus and its inferior ramus. And then this is my ischium and this is something very prominent. This is the spine of the ischium or the ischial spine and there you are looking at the greater sciatic notch and the lesser sciatic notch. You can see this big hollow. That hollow is given the name of the obturator foramina and this big cup shaped cavity we call it acetabulum. Now look at it. This sacrum on both the sides it articulates with the hip bone and this joint which is helping to articulate my sacrum with the hip bones on both the sides posteriorly that joint is called sacroiliac joint and this is an example of a plain synovial joint. After that you can see there is another place where my sacrum is joining with the coccygeus bone and they are also articulating through a secondary cartilaginous joint. And the third joint where two of my pubic bones which are part of the hip bone they are articulating anteriorly in the midline through another secondary cartilaginous joint at the place called pubic symphysis. So altogether my pelvis has three articulation in front the two hip bones they are articulating at the pubic symphysis a secondary cartilaginous joint posteriorly sacroiliac joint between the sacrum and the ilium and this is plain synovial joint and at the bottom where sacrum ends and coccygeus begins this is also an example of secondary cartilaginous joint The pelvis is helping us in locomotion. How? The weight of the body is transmitted through my vertebral column and it is going to my lower limbs. Then the second job is it's helpful 
in childbirth and the third job of my pelvis is it is helpful for very strong muscular attachment and within the cavity of the pelvis we have the pelvic organs in the anatomical position normal anatomical position we have to look from a side my two reference points anterior superior iliac spine and pubic tubercle they lie in the same vertical plane and then my pubic crest spine of the ischium and the coccygeus they lie in the same horizontal plane pelvic skeleton is constructed like a shallow funnel to understand this concept we need to look into this funnel and you are looking at a big broad funnel and this shallow funnel now let's label it and see what happens so this broad end or the receiving end of the funnel we call it greater pelvis or the false pelvis if we go downwards this part is labeled as the lesser pelvis or the true pelvis now this true pelvis and false pelvis this true pelvis is separate from false pelvis at a bony demarcation and this bony demarcation is given a name this is called as the pelvic brim and this pelvic brim is a very important anatomical and a clinical landmark now you can see that this arrow indicates the inlet into my true pelvis and then we call it pelvic inlet or superior pelvic aperture and then at the bottom of it we can see the pelvic outlet now you can see that from the pelvic inlet there are two obliquely going orange lines and these obliquely going orange lines are representing something which is really important and this is my pelvic diaphragm and this is a compartmentalization this is a separation which divides my true pelvis into two separate areas the area which is enclosed within like above this pelvic diaphragm and between this pelvic brim that area is called pelvic cavity proper and below to it we have the area and that area is being labeled as the perineum the perineum is the part where we have the external genitalia and they are organized according to the gender now let's look at another very important reference point and that reference point is the demarcation point which separates my greater pelvis from my lesser pelvis my false pelvis from my true pelvis and if we can start looking at the boundary the most anteriorly we can see the pubic crest then we can see the pectinate line and then we can see the arcuate line of the ilium and this is the alar of the ilium and then we can see this is the promontory this is one side and there is another side so this complete ring we call it as the pelvic brim and pelvic brim act as a landmark which separates my greater pelvis from the lesser pelvis now if you look at in the normal anatomical position this 
pelvic brim is not lying in a horizontal plane. It is rather obliquely placed and this makes an angle of 60 degree with my horizontal plane. It is lying, you can see that it's lying obliquely. So this obliquity, it makes a degree of 60 with the horizontal plane. it lodges the lower part of the contents of my abdomen and primarily it have the loops of intestine and the omentum. On the right side we are looking at the right iliac fossa and on the left side this is my left iliac fossa. Right iliac fossa primarily lodges the cecum, vermiform appendix and the terminal ileum and ileocecal valve and on the left side we have primarily the presence of the sigmoid colon so these are the contents the major contents of my greater pelvis now as we said this pelvic brim is the demarcation and in the bottom we have the pelvic organs okay let's see the organs which are located in the true pelvis and this is the female pelvis. So what we can see most anterior structure just behind my pubic symphysis is the urinary bladder. At the moment it is covered, it is under cover of the peritoneum and just behind that you can see this is the uterus and look at it, this uterus almost lean over the urinary bladder and then the place between, the tip in between my urinary, urinary bladder and the uterus, we call it vesico uterine pouch. This is uterus, these are the tubes and there you can see the ovaries. This is the fimbrias which are part of the tubes. These are the ureters. Now the most posterior structure, just in front of my sacrum, this is the rectum which continues as the anal canal and the space between you can see there is a very obvious dip here the space between the rectum and the uterus we call it recto uterine pouch or pouch of douglas so this is the organization of the organs within a female pelvis now within the true pelvis of a male we have only the urinary bladder which is as usual just behind the pubic symphysis this is the urinary bladder and you can see partially it's been covered by the peritoneum the other half is shown without having the peritoneum and then this is you're looking at the rectum and in between my rectum and the urinary bladder this dip where this peritoneum dips inward and that space is called recto vesical pouch and these are the two ureters which has been shown and you are looking at the vast differences which has been shown going backwards to be connected to my prostatic part of the urethra which is not shown now we can see at the bottom of my pelvis and you are looking at the pelvic diaphragm and this pelvic diaphragm is primarily made up of a big muscle that is called levator ani and then it has been assisted by coccygeus and the lateral walls has been reinforced by the obturator internus and the piriformis muscle. 